ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, presents Speed World. Today, live from Atlanta Motor Speedway near Hampton, Georgia, it's the Hooters 500. A beautiful day here, and the crowd is anticipating perhaps the biggest race in NASCAR history, at least in the modern era. There are fans rooting for their favorite driver, as for the first time in NASCAR history, six drivers are eligible for the championship going into this event. The quest for the cup standing showed Davey Allison on top by 30 over Alan Kowicki, but also Bill Elliott, Harry Gant, and Kyle Petty are eligible. And then Mark Martin is the sixth driver mathematically capable of taking the championship here today. And good afternoon, welcome to Atlanta Motor Speedway. We here at ESPN very proud to bring you this final race of the 1992 season as we wrap things up. Not only a championship at stake here today, but perhaps as important, it's the final race for a guy who started his career back in 1958 and has become the king of stock car racing. It's Richard Petty's final ride. Here's more with Jerry Punch. Bob, I have never seen an atmosphere more electric, more emotion in the air. Richard Petty, last October, a year ago, you announced the Fan Appreciation Tour. Your chance to give something back, but they turned the tables on you. They wanted to say thank you to you. Now, on behalf of us at ESPN and the millions of fans around the world who didn't get a chance, thank you for all the memories. Well, we thank everybody. It's just been a great, great year. Uh, our race has not been too good, but everything else has been great, and we couldn't have been better from the fans' uh, part of it. Uh, you know, I started out to say thank you, fans. Fans come back and said thank you, Richard, and I've enjoyed all 35 years of it. Hope they have. Richard, we've all enjoyed it. Now, how about today? The STP Pontiac ran well in practice yesterday. Could you possibly give us one more memory? Uh, I'd be asking a little bit much, just to tell you the truth. But you can say one thing. We're going to go out there and try and do the very best we can. And, uh, you know, if the good Lord willing, uh, we'll, we'll be right there with them when it's over with. Good luck to you. Thank you, man. Richard Petty, the undisputed king of stock car racing. Emotion flowing down here on pit road. Another driver has to have a head full of emotions is standing by with John Curtin. Jerry, the whole season has been an emotional roller coaster for Davey Allison. A lot of people say for what he's been through, he deserves to win this championship. And hard work and perseverance have paid off. Davey, you are in the lead heading in here to the last race. How you holding up, buddy? I'll tell you, John, right now I'm just incredibly nervous. I don't think I've ever been this nervous in my life, but we're, we're excited. A lot of anticipation going around right now. A lot of hard work by this team has paid off to get us to where we are, but we want to earn this championship today. Well, you're going to have to earn it. The car yesterday running great in the afternoon. Or in fact, you didn't take it out late, so you must feel pretty good about it. Well, we ran the early morning practice session, and we ran real good. We were real happy with the way the car drove and went out in the, the afternoon practice session. And again, it was really good. We made a couple of minor adjustments, but we think we're in pretty good shape. We just want to have an event-free race, try to stay out of trouble, and be around at the end. Davey Allison hoping not only to win the race, but also to wrap up the championship, but it won't be easy. He has to finish in at least fifth place to clinch the title. We finally have a championship that all the drivers have to run as hard as they can go. Don't you think, Ned? They got to go for it. Oh, yeah, they got to go for the win. And if Davey Allison has a car capable of running in the top five, he has a car capable of winning the race. So they got to go all out. And man, that's exciting. Have six drivers that are in the championship hunt in the last race of the season and Richard Petty retiring at the same time. You must be pretty excited. <laughs> Ned has lost his voice. He's going to be up here. He's going to try to help us through the day. And folks, we are entering one of the most exciting races ever in Winston Cup racing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, again, I must ask you to clear the wheel fins. We're only moments away. We'll be going back down track side for the spectacular words you've been waiting on for the running of the Hooters Fire. Everyone, please take a seat in the grandstands. Let's clear pit road. Let's clear pit road, please. The end war, buddy. Ready, start your engine. That's just a bit of rehearsal going on. Back there. From Kyle well, there we two gentlemen start your engines given here today. The petty children have already told Daddy to start his engine. I'm not so sure that he heard the command because he seems to be sitting patiently in his race car. But the other 40 now competitors await the command for them to start their engine as we get set to wrap things up in the 1992 season. Richard says his only <laughs> quiet time and time of being alone 
is when he strapped down in that race car. And that's exactly where he's at at this very moment as we get close to the command. We must clear pit road. A quick reminder. You can see the tremendous crowd that has drive. gathered here to watch this final event of the year. And there are a lot of people on pit road for the pre-race ceremonies that now must be cleared away before we can start the engines and have the cars move down pit road and then on to this one and a half mile racetrack to begin 328 laps of competition that will make up the Hooters 500. Richard Petty says so long as a driver and hello as a car owner. A final interview going on now as Richard Petty has already got the helmet on waiting the were to move out and begin a warm up lap. Atlanta Motor Speedway has seen many, many improvements in the Ladies last few years, and would, it please, once again, has built more grandstands than you can imagine for this event. Last year, there were over 122,000 people that attended this race, and many, many more grandstands have been built. Start your engine! driver to crack 180 miles an hour on this facility. Rick Mast in the Flash Food Skull Classic Racing. Car number one. Outside the front row will be Brett Bodine in the number 26 Quaker State Ford. The second row, the defending Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt in the GM Goodrich Chevrolet, car number three. And then the first of those eligible for the championship here today in the Valvoline Ford, car number six, Mark Martin. Row number three, it's Ernie Irvin in the Kodak Film Chevrolet car number four, and then the Sunoco Chevrolet car number 94, driven by Terry Labonte. Dick Trickle will start in seventh position. He drives number eight, the Snickers Ford. Jeff Bodine flanks him in the fourth row in number 15, Motorcraft Ford. Morgan Shepard starts ninth in the Citgo Ford car 21, and then the Purolator Chevrolet car number 10, driven by Derek Cope. Bill Elliott starts 11th in the Budweiser Ford, car number 11, looking for his second Winston Cup championship. Alongside him will be his teammate, Sterling Marlin, in the Maxwell House Coffee Ford, car number 22. The seventh row, Lake Speed in the Purex Detergent Ford, car number 83, and second in points, Alan Kulwicki in the Hooters Ford, car number seven. The eighth row, it's Rusty Wallace in the Miller Genuine Draft Pontiac, and Ricky Rudd in the Tide Chevrolet. Davey Allison will start inside of row number nine in the Texaco Haviland Ford number 28, and then Jimmy Spencer in the Rebestus Ford car number 12. The 10th row, Hut Strickland, who's driving today the Kellogg's Ford number 41, and then Kyle Petty in the Mellow Yellow Pontiac. 
And as you look at the rest of the starting lineup note that Jeff Gordon who will be making his first Winston Cup start here today will go from inside row number 11. And Jeff Gordon has been one of the fastest cars in practice. They were down here last week practicing. Jeff Gordon was fast. He's been practicing. He's been fast Friday and Saturday. So maybe we could see something out of the 21 year old. And I think it's fantastic that Jeff Gordon is running his first race when Richard Petty is running his last race. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, in the testing that they had down here last week, Jeff Gordon did achieve a lap over 181 miles an hour, but he had a few problems in his original qualifying, began, uh, rather took the second day qualifying, and became the fastest second day qualifier. We have a true oval that we're racing on here this afternoon, uh, kind of unlike most other tracks on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit of this size at least it's a mile and a half in length the pole speed is 180.183 a, a time of 30.409 seconds will go 328 laps this afternoon and the field is separated by just about eight tenths of a second. The problem with the racetrack it is so the corners are so long each turn is a half mile each straightaway a quarter mile and there we see pit road only one pit road on the front straightaway at the start finish line there's turns one and two. Once again, a half mile long bank, 24 degrees, same thing for three and four. So the court, the drivers, we can see the banking at 24 degrees. The straightaways are banked five degrees. And Bob, this is a tough racetrack physically on the drivers because of being in the corner so much. All the uh, drivers will say it's one of the toughest tracks because you are turning almost constantly. The Apache helicopters continue to hover overhead as the field now begins to get in formation. Richard Petty, as he has done at every race this year on the Fan Appreciation Tour, is leading this first parade lap, and then he will fall back into his regularly assigned spot, which today is 39th. We have an in-car camera riding with the King this afternoon on his final event. There it is looking out the back to the other 40 starters. Jimmy Hensley will also carry one of our in-car cameras, the Phillips 66 in-car camera. As he is going through the banking in turns number three and four. There's Sterling Marlin in the Maxwell House Ford, car number 22. He also will carry an in-car camera for us here this afternoon. Yeah, I got you. There's Martin Martin's car, car number six, the Bible Lane Ford, with an in-car camera. Also, Morgan Shepard will have the roof cam. That ought to be fun. That ought to be fantastic. And what a crowd we have. Look at the fans. Oh, boy. Waving to the drivers as they go down the front straightaway. Now Richard will fall back into his starting position, as you said. The Apache helicopters now end their hover and begin to chase the field as it goes around this one and a half mile oval. I expect the race cars to win this race. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite a spectacle though to see all of this pre-race activity and to end the season on this tremendous note. It's been a great season but to think that we have six drivers eligible to win the championship depending upon what happens in the next 328 laps is absolutely unbelievable. Look at the altitude that this wow. helicopter is. What do you mean altitude? <laughs> There's hardly any altitude at all, is there? Exactly. He's not more than uh, 25 feet off the ground down the back stretch. Now moving up a little bit to clear the grandstands as they fly by us. When I said they might win this race, I meant when the race cars are up to full speed, not when they're <laughs> going around on a pace lap. That's right. But the fans are loving it. There isn't a single person gathered here this afternoon who is seated. Everybody is up. Everybody is anticipating the start of the race. And there's a lot at stake money-wise. $778,187 will go to the winner of this event here today. The Unical bonus, if Rick Mass can win, is worth $15,200. No, no, no. The winner won't get 778. That's the total purse. The total purse. The winner will get about 75,000. Yeah, so pretty good share. Of not it. too bad. <laughs> and we're also racing for the Winston Cup point fund, which is worth two or three million dollars. So one three million. or four million dollars at stake today. Million drivers goes to the champion, of course. One of six drivers. There's the in-car camera with the king, Richard Petty. He's fallen back into 39th position now. And in one more lap. We will get this race underway. Don't you know he's, uh, OK, guys. Goosebumps. He and Davey Allison. Of course, Richard, I don't think he's showing his emotion the way that Davey is. We could tell that Davey, I talked to him earlier. He really is nervous. 
it's kind of unusual to hear a driver admit that he is nervous before a race. But if things go the way they tell me they go with race drivers, at this point, now that the car has started, he's within a half lap of going green. He's forgotten all that and is calmed down now and ready to race. The Apache helicopters salute the field now as they fly over the infield. And they will be going on past the second turn. And all eyes will then be focused upon the field. And they'll go wherever helicopters go. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Rick Mast winning his very first pole position in Winston Cup competition. 28 drivers have led a lap in 1992, but not Rick Mast. He has not led a race since Darlington in September of last year. Let's see if he does lead lap number one. Quite in a shock case, when Rick Mast won the pole position on qualifying Friday afternoon. The crowd rises to its feet, salutes the field as it comes down. The green flag waves, and the Hooters 500 is underway. Here they come, Mark Martin trying desperately to let get five bonus points. But they are not won't win. Rick Mass, the pole sitter, is heavily damaged in the right front and in the right rear of the car. The accident occurred as the cars went into turn number one after they had completed just one lap. Here's what happened. Bodine was in the lead as they crossed the stripe, but Rick Mast was right there on the outside, and then Brett's car got out from under him. Got out from under him. Rick Mast spins, and we see all the cars going by on the inside. And Mark Martin, what a great job he's doing saving that automobile. Quickie turned the car left. Now here comes, who is that yellow car? Is that 41? I believe it is. Is yeah. that Hud Strickland in the Kellogg's Cornflakes car? We see Kyle, Kyle Petty going right through the middle of that. Here's another angle. What happens is that Rick Mast on the outside of Brett Bodine takes all the cushion away and he's not able to get any air. And Earnhardt run right up, ran right up under Brett Bodine, which took the air off the spoiler and the cushion was gone from the outside. He didn't have anything to lean on. No, he had no air at all to lean on. From airship Shamu hovering overhead. Good perspective of the crash and how most people avoid it. There is Hut Strickland's contact with Brett Bodine. We we'll see some sheet metal going across, and there is that Rich Bickle. Looks like Rich Bickle spinning out. And there is looks like uh, maybe Jimmy Spencer also. Remember now, we have seen Davy Allison, Alan Kowicki, and Bill Elliott. There is Elliott right behind. Morgan Shepard all three of those cars appear to be OK and did not get involved in the second lap accident here at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We'll be right back. ESPN Speed World today at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Hooters 500 the 29th and final race of the 92 season for the NASCAR Winston Cup Series and we've had an accident on the second lap as six cars were involved in this incident. Wally Dollenbach Jr. and Rich Bickle spun. Four others have received some damage. They are Brett, Rick, Hutt and Jimmy Spencer. Now the exciting Gillette Halfway Challenge is coming up in today's race. The driver leading at the halfway lap will win $10,000 and you a fan at home will have a chance to win a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina Z34. 
You've entered the contest for this race and your entry is selected and you are called at home. You must name the driver who wins the Gillette Halfway Challenge $10,000 award to be eligible to win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Dale Earnhardt is the leader of the race while the cleanup goes on over in turns number one and two. Let's watch Davey Allison as he goes through the wreck. There's Jimmy Spencer right in front of him. Davey is trying to get his car slowed. Spencer goes high. Davey slows down dramatically. Kyle Petty, Jeff Gordon, that's Jeff in the 24 car. Ted Musgrave comes down. Luckily, he didn't run in the back of Davey Allison. Let's watch Bill Elliott as he gets through the crash. He's following Derek Cope. Sterling Martin. There's Alan Kowicki right behind him, and they drive into the smoke. See if they had any close calls. Ooh, oh, yes. Yeah. And Kowicki, we saw him just turn left. Now we have cameras isolated on the three main contenders. That's why we can show you how each got through the crash. Here's Kowicki. We're on the seventh car. Watch him turn the car left and almost get hit by Ricky Rudd as he turned left. Now they've got to worry about the one car coming down. Both of them got by. Dr. Jerry Punch is in Davy Allison's pit. Guys, a lot of concern down here in Davy Allison's pit. Now, Larry McReynolds behind me has been talking to Davy. Let me try to grab Joey Knuckles quickly. Joey, the concern is the damage on the left rear. What would that produce due to the car here early in the race? Well, Jimmy Spencer pulled up there and uh, told us that uh, there's it's not going to rub. What we're concerned with is air uh, getting up inside the trunk. The way it's pulled out, it's pulled apart from our crush panel. So that's going to kind of act like a, a parachute. Uh, we'll run until we get a caution. We don't want to pit right now and get at the end of that pack. You know, the good Lord was looking out for us. That, that's all that happened to us. But uh, we can fix it when, once we start pitting. We'll just push it in. At the crush panel now is the panel inside the tire well in the left rear that keeps air from getting inside the tire and more importantly inside the trunk that would create a parachute or balloon effect as he said and slow the car down gradually. I tell you, that was a big decision that they had to make. They got a caution right now. This is an early caution, but as Joey Knuckles says, they don't want to go to the rear of the pack here. But still, if that thing should give them any problems at all in the handling, you know, it could come back to bite them. Once again, here is a replay. There's Davey Allison. There's 41 car right behind him, Hud Strickland. Oh, and Davey backs off. Hud goes in, hits him in the rear. And that shot Hud down into the uh, 26 car. Exactly. And I said Jimmy Spencer was in the crash. I think that was Bob Shack instead of Spencer that I saw backed up against the wall. There's Davey, and there is the damage that you can see on the left rear of that car. Mark Martin has made a pit stop. He's on pit road right now. So is Michael Waltrip. And Jerry, can you see what's going on there? We, we can, Bob. They're changing all four tires on the Babylon Ford. They decided that he had run through some debris. Don't want to take any chances here. You know, they're on the radial tires, and it's a very good tire. And as we all know, the radials are very difficult to cut. But they ran across some sheet metal and some sharp objects up there in the turn and said, why take a chance? It's early on. We've got a caution. We'll start back here and hope that we'll have no problems and we can pick our way to the field. So possibly a little bit of a gamble early on to come in and change all four tires. Here is a replay from Mark Martin's in-car camera. Let's listen. I tell you what, folks, that looked like a small wiggle, but that was no small wiggle. That was tough. Mark Martin makes it through, but makes a pit stop here in the early going. Dale Earnhardt is the leader of the race as we remain under caution here in the Hooters 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. We remain under caution here at Atlanta because of an accident on the second lap involving about four or five cars. Brett Bodine, the car most heavily damaged. Rick Mass, the pole sitter, also involved. There's a hot air balloon overhead carrying the number 43. And at the conclusion of this event, we urge you to stay tuned for a very special salute. The portrait of a king, a special progr program devoted to Richard Petty. It is, believe me, worth staying with us for after this event. Portrait of a king immediately following 
our live telecast of the Hooters 500. Here's Jerry Punch. Bob, how quickly fortunes can change for a driver. Rick Mass picking up his first career pole is now behind the wall in the Skull Classic Olds, and Rick still sitting in the car. Rick, what happened up there? Sure, I'm not sure. We're going the corner, you know, the first lap of the race. Uh, on the outside of Brett. I don't know what happened. You know, he he got into me, but I, I you know, I, I think something must have happened to him. Somebody got into him or something. I'm not sure. You know, I was trying to stay high, just stay in one groove, so. You know, it wouldn't be any problems. Boom, it's over with. We had a good car, but you know, we'll be back from Daytona. You talk about the emotion. You can see Rick Mass in the car. You can hear it in his voice. They're working on the car, but his day in the sun, guys, his pole, everything he was hoping for is gone. But we'll remember Rick Mast as being the pole sitter for this historical event here at Atlanta, despite the fact that he is not going to win the race. He was the pole sitter and the first to crack the 180 mile an hour barrier of the pressure. There's Davey Allison, and again, note the damage on the left rear of that car. We don't know yet how it's going to affect the handling because we have not been under green since it occurred. We will be watching it very closely when the green flag does come out. Alan Kowicki and Bill Elliott are still okay. Their cars were not damaged in that incident. As the cleanup continues down in turn number one, we'll get some uh, brakes out of the way so you can, we can bring you as much action as we possibly can on this historic day in Atlanta. Joining us today is Airship Shamu. The SeaWorld lamp measures 194 feet in length, 67 feet tall. That's two-thirds the length of a football field and nearly seven stories high, providing some great shots from overhead. Atlanta focused in right now on King Richard Petty as he gets start ready to restart this race, and the word has been given we'll go green next time around. Now Richard Petty was one driver. There were many that made pit stops during this caution, Bob. Some were involved over there, some were not. Richard Petty was not, but he did come in for a pit stop, so he's back near the rear of the field. Dale Earnhardt will lead them down for the restart. Ernie Irvin will go from second position. Lights on top of the pace car are out. Look at how close it was for Dale Earnhardt. I'm telling you. Oh man. What was that inches. Yeah if Brett's car had slid just inches to the inside to the outside they would have collected Earnhardt. Dale by the way only looking for his second win of the 1992 season and more importantly looking to get into the top 10 in the point standings. He goes into this event in 11th position and so he's trying to make the top 10 so that among other things his expenses to the banquet in New York City at the Waldorf Astoria will be paid by NASCAR. Here's the green flag. We're back to racing. Coming off the second corner, Kawicki drove up on the outside of Elliott, made it free and rest. Meanwhile, Rusty Wallace trying to get by Kawicki. That was on the inside of Bill Elliott. First two cars, uh, first four cars actually have broken away from the rest of the field. There's Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki running nose to tail. Sterling Marlin behind Alan. He starts going in these turns at about 200 miles an hour. This is from Sterling Marlin's viewpoint as he's right behind Alan Kowicki coming down the main straightaway into turn number one again. Eric Cope and Morgan Shepard are nearly side by side. Elliott's car slides up the racetrack a little, and Alan Kowicki moves to the inside. Derek Cope got a good run going, so does Morgan Shepard. Here's Kowicki on the inside of Elliott. Two of the three competitors trying to win the win. Actually, two of the six 
that have a mathematical shot but realistically only about three have a shot at winning the title here Allison Elliott and Cole Wiki. Yeah those three will just about have to fall out of the race for any of the other three to have a shot. John Kernan has a report on Hutt Strickland. Bob, they've just uh, put Hutt into an ambulance. They're going to take him to a nearby hospital to check him out further. Hutt is able to stand up. He's alert, but his neck is very stiff. He's complaining of a stiff neck. So they are uh, taking him by ambulance to a local hospital, mostly as a precautionary measure. Now, Brett Bodine is still in the infield medical center. They are checking out him, and we'll update you on Brett's condition as soon as we know more. So Hutt Strickland ends his 1992 season on a very sour note, but he has great hopes for 19. As he'll be involved with the Junior Johnson team and McDonald's sponsorship for the 93 season. Look at this, Morgan Shepard. Oh, he goes almost collects Elliott. He had to get all the way out of the gas. And here's a lead change. Ernie Irvin, the Kodak Film Chevrolet, has taken the lead from Earnhardt. Earnhardt's crew chief, Kirk Shelmerdine, has announced his retirement. This will be his final race as crew chief for the Richard Childress team and Dale Earnhardt. He's not uh, going anywhere else. He's retiring from the business. Right now, Earnhardt is second following Ernie Urban. And gentlemen, it's very obvious, I think, to everybody that there is so much emotion, there is so much on the line here that this is going to be an incredible afternoon. And Let's here's evidence of that as uh, Morgan Shepard got a little sideways. Same kind of a situation as Brett Bodine and, and Rick Mast. They go in the corner and there's no air to lean on, no cushion for Morgan Shepard that car's on the outside. He loses control, almost loses control, and Elliott had to say, man, and here goes, here's the lead change, a replay of the lead change just a moment ago as Ernie Urban down the front straightaway, position on Earnhardt, takes a spot away. Ernie continues to hang on to the lead with Earnhardt running in second position right behind him. Jeff Bodine is third. is in fourth position. Ernie Urban is tenth in the point standing, so that's the position that Earnhardt wants. They want that red car. Jeff Bodine is gaining on the front two. Bud Moore's cars always run strong on this racetrack. Remember Morgan Shepard. Let's see who won in his car here a few years ago. Yeah, Morgan Ricky Shepard. Rudd. Did. Yeah, Ricky Rudd won, won the here, race. Yes. And Morgan Shepard won here. There's Napa Field summary: the way the cars crossed the line last lap. Jeff Gordon running in 16th position. Interesting statistic, and as we mentioned, that Richard Petty is making his 1185th start in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. If the schedule remains the same at 29 or 30 races, Jeff Gordon will start his 1185th NASCAR Winston Cup race when he is 61 years old. Wow. <laughs> Richter, the competition director for all of NASCAR, introduced Dick Beatty. Of course, this is Dick Beatty's last race as the competition director for the Winston Cup Series. And uh, he said, uh, no, Beatty was introducing Richter and said, Here, so here's my boss, he said, until dark. <laughs> <laughs> there is Davey Allison and Alan Kowicki. So this is 1-2. Kowicki second in the Winston Cup standings. Davey Allison leading. Kawicki took off like he had a good race car, like he was going to the front. He now is mired down and really can't make the passes. And Davies' car doesn't appear to be that much affected by the damage to the left rear. Well, he seems to be able to run with the crowd, okay. There is Bill Elliott and Sterling Marlin. Sterling is sixth, Bill is seventh. Six. 
saw Kawicki, he was able to get by Ricky Rudd, so he moved up one spot. Fifth is Rusty Wallace. Fourth is Terry Labonte. Third is Jeff Bodine. Second is Earnhardt, and the leader is Ernie Irvin. have been completed in the Hooters 500 here in Atlanta. We'll be back with more live coverage after this. Three car battle up front in the Hooters 500 at Atlanta Motor Speedway. The finale of the 92 NASCAR Winston Cup season. Urban. Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine are first, second, and third. The leader in the points standings, Davey Allison, is back in 11th position. And if points were awarded right now, Allison would emerge as the champion by 20 over Elliott. As Elliott is now running in 6th, Kowicki 9th, Kyle 13th, Gant 24th, and Mark Martin 22nd, but Mark Martin is on the move. Yeah, he made a pit stop during that caution flag and was behind a lot of equipment, but he was definitely on the move. Now we're riding with Mark Martin as he has chased down this pack. So he started 40, but he's now up to 17th. That's 16th directly in front of him. Let's watch the telemetry as he goes down the corner. He's accelerating off the corner, 171. Let's just see what kind of miles per hour he'll run at the end of the straightaway. Mile and a half racetrack, 100 and Flint is not quite right. 189 miles an hour is the maximum we saw. Go we'll watch the RPM. Got up to 190. This is the third fastest racetrack on the schedule next to Talladega and Daytona. Jeff Bodine looks to the inside of Dale Earnhardt. Coming off the fourth turn. And both these cars have caught Ernie Irvin, and I think right now they're in the ride mode. I think they're just trying to take it easy. This is a 500-mile race. There's no point in taking too much chances right now. Jerry Punch has an update on Davey Allison. Following the damage on Davey's car, the crew just shared with me moments ago, Bob, that Davey said he's got a slight push just coming off the corner. Otherwise, Davey said, hey, guys, we might have gotten very, very lucky. Let's check in down with John Kernan at the hospital. John? Well, Jerry, some good news for Brett Bodine. Kenny Bernstein, his car owner, just told me moments ago that he is okay, but they will take him to the hospital to check out his head. Kenny said that Brett took a pretty hard hit on his head. They think he's okay. They just want him to go to the hospital just to make sure. So some really encouraging news from the Infield Medical Center. And so the two drivers that we had medical concern about, Hutt Strickland and Brett Bodine, are apparently not seriously injured, although both will be taken to a local hospital. That because of the accident that occurred in turn number one at the beginning of lap number two. And we see that Mark Martin has been able to get by and Morgan Shepard and Davey Allison, not that many cars in front of him. Maybe trying to get by Jerry Cope and Pure Leader Chevrolet. And now here comes Kyle Petty. We saw the damage to the rear of Davey Allison's car. That could affect his rear spoiler. Remember, yesterday in the Arca race, part of the spoiler blew off of an automobile. I guess, who was that? That was Mickey Gibbs' car. Here comes Kowicki trying to get by Sterling Marlin, the Maxwell House car. And he makes the pass. But part of Mickey Gibbs' spoiler came off when he went down the corner and around he went. And uh, Davey Allison obviously doesn't have those problems, but it could affect the car. The bent sheet metal in the rear of the Hamlin Ford. Kowicki just took seventh position from Sterling Marlin. Riding with Sterling now. Oh, this 
fellows riding up the center to the top of the racetrack. During qualifying, the preferred groove on the bottom of the racetrack. As the tires get worn, they move up the racetrack. Looking for Davey Allison. Here he comes out of the pack to try to pass Jeff Gordon in the number 24 car. And Mark Martin has gotten by Davey Allison. He is past him. He is marching towards the front fast in that six Babylon Ford, that what, blue and white car. Right in the center of the screen. That's Mark Martin. Seems to have one of the fastest cars on the track now. He just he jams up in traffic, can't get by. Yeah, those cars have run side by side. Derek Cope and Kyle Petty for about four laps now. Mark just doesn't have anywhere to go. He doesn't know which one to follow. Kyle inches ahead now of Derek Cope in the third turn, but Cope battles back on the outside. There come three wide. Look at Mark Martin, his car below the white line. Wow. Jeff Gordon is tucked right in behind Mark Martin while Davey is drafting on Kyle Petty. And Davey has gotten by Jeff Gordon on the outside. That's Kenny Schrader, the white car, right in the middle of the screen. And Lake Speed also. Morgan Shepard is in this group. Davey tries to go by on the outside of Kyle Petty. One thing about Atlanta, it's a mile and a half and there's a lot of corner but the turns are wide enough so you can ride two and three and sometimes even four west of here. Yes you can. And here goes Mark Martin. Now he's trying to get by Derek Cope. Is he going to have any more luck than Kyle Petty did? Let's see. Boy Cope is having a good run and maybe he has something to prove. He is back with the Whitcomb team in 93. Now this pack that we're watching is about a half a lap behind those running up front including Ernie Irvin, Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine. Dale Earnhardt is taking over the lead now and uh, pulled away a little bit from Earnhardt. Steve Martin once again trying, trying, trying. He's clear of him now. Three of those cars that you see in the top six in the Winter Cup point standings Mark Martin, Kyle Petty, and Davey Allison. That's Kyle Petty, the green and black car on the bottom. Mark Martin has moved into 11th. And that's how far they are behind those that are running up front. There is King Richard Petty. About to go a lap down to Earnhardt. There's the leader, Dale Earnhardt, directly behind Richard. We're looking at him from the camera atop Richard Petty's STP Pontiac. We see Earnhardt is pulled out to a 15 20 car that gets that in on Ernie Irvin. They found that high groove about 15 laps ago, Benny, and uh, it's working for him. The way his car is set up right now, Earnhardt and he just took off. So Dale Earnhardt is leading the Hooters 500 with Richard Petty down a lap now. Irvin, Bodine, Wallace, and Elliott complete the top five. We have cameras everywhere at Atlanta Motor Speedway as we televise this final Winston Cup race of the year watching the suspension on Mark Martin's car. It takes a beating though. It does take a beating. It never stops going up and down, up and down. And now on Jimmy Hensley's car. It's a rear tire here. And again, once again, it's going up and down. Never stops. We can see through the wheel. And how about Morgan Shepard? <laughs> and this is an interesting <laughs> that uh, the sponsors have managed to find where we have our cameras and put their uh, signature on it. I tell you what, Ned, that's a trick spring there. I've never seen a spring like that in a rear car. <laughs> I didn't know Sid go made a spring. No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> the top five: Dale Earnhardt, Ernie Irvin, Jeff Bodine, Rusty Wallace, and Bill Elliott. As 44 of 328 laps have been completed. Points as of now. Look how close it is. Four separating Allison and Kowicki. Elliott is third in the points if they were to be awarded right now, but we've got a long way to go. And Ernie Irvin has caught Dale Earnhardt. Dale was several car lengths ahead a few laps ago, and Ernie now has caught up with him. Well, I think Nick pointed out that Dale Earnhardt started running the high groove and was able to pass Ernie Irvin. Irvin saw Earnhardt up there and said, hey, I think I'll venture up and see what's happening up there. 
When he did that, he closed up on the back bumper off Dale Earnhardt. Now, Jeff Bodine has been running on the bottom of the racetrack. He's ventured up to the top of the racetrack, and he seems to be getting a little closer. Well, we see him on the bottom right there, but he's closed up on the back bumper of Irvin, or almost on the back bumper. Jimmy Means goes a lap down in the early Lobo car. Sponsorship on that this week. That's the black car there at the bottom of the racetrack. There's Rich Bickle on the black and green car that Bernard's going by. There goes Rusty Wallace. There's Bill Elliott. Got a good run going in the same straightaway. So certainly among those eligible for the championship, Bill is furthest up in the standings right now and having the best run. But I think Quick is just one position behind Bill. Yes, that's correct. We don't see him in the picture, but he is the next car behind Bill Elliott. So right now, Kowicki is in front of Elliott as far as points are concerned. Dale Earnhardt. 
Guys, Richard Childress just told me a minute ago that Earnhardt Radio the crew that he thinks he may have broken a valve spring. The car is beginning to flutter a little bit, not running as strong as it was early on. He's awfully, he's running awfully well, but since the car is starting to flutter a little more, they won't know when they make their first pit stop, which should be in about six or seven laps. Well, I could believe that because what Earnhardt has done when he's moved up high on the racetrack, he's made it a larger racetrack, so the RPMs are going to be excessive, which the first thing that on high RPMs, the first thing you break is a valve spring. We'll watch the situation very closely regarding the driver who now leads the Hooters 500, Dale Earnhardt. We'll be back with more in just a moment at Atlanta. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway. Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace almost contact on pit road. Earnhardt has run out of fuel. He radioed the crew just a moment ago, said the fuel pressure gauge has fluctuated. Guys, I got to come in now. And Rusty Wallace is pushing him, trying to give him an assistance down pit road. They are running very, very slowly, and Earnhardt is totally out of fuel. The car number three is not running. He is coasting down pit road. Richard Childress and the crew standing here with a bottle of ether to try to get the car refired. And now it quietly, can you believe the luck that Dale Earnhardt has had in 1992? The Goodrich crew goes to work. They will change all four tires down here. And Kyle Petty is making it on the pit road. Let's go to John Kernan. Jerry, they've already got on right side tires, left side much going on. Kyle gets down and away a pretty fast pit stop for the Mellow Yellow crew. Back down. for Ernie Irvin, who went up in the lead car. They put right side tires on the crew, scampering around. They are pushing Dale Earnhardt's car. Why yes, that car fired? And now Earnhardt's car does refire as the pure later car goes by. In front of the Ford going out, carrying Jeff Bodine leading pit road. And the car number 30 has spun. The Pennzoil Pontiac has spun. We should be seeing caution here at Atlanta. We do see caution. Doyle Ford is waving the caution flag because of Michael Waltrip's spin. Unbelievable. All these guys ran out of fuel, and before some of the cars could make their pit stop, the caution comes out as Michael Waltrip, the Pennzoil Pontiac, comes off the corner, and around he goes. No contact with any other driver. The car just broke loose at the top of the racetrack in turn two, and then he backed it into the wall on the back stretch, and then may have made contact. Don't think he did, but the you can see the left uh, front tire blow there. But boy, I, these points leaders, did they get Bill Elliott, Davey Allison, Alan Kawicki had not made their pit stops. These fellas have got several of, of good cars a lap down now. Man, Elliott is leading the race. That's five bonus points. That helps him close the gap. Trying to win his second Winston Cup championship. There he is, Bill Elliott, leading the race. Second is Alan Kowicki. Now then, when they make their pit stop, will Davey stay on the racetrack, lead the race, and get five bonus points? Will Kowicki, what do you think? Well, I don't know. They're going to be giving up a lot of track position. I know they are. What's going to, let's see how this plays out. And they Boy, also, don't you know these radios are going radios are going back and forth. What do we do? What do we do? Hey guys, make that call. I'm gonna go. Here comes Bill. Here comes Allen. Let's see what Davey does. Davey's to the inside. Yeah, he's coming in. Mark Martin is in. Ricky Rudd and others. Very slowly down pit road. Jerry Punch, here they come. And Ellen Kowicki's Hooters crew will go to work on that car. Car number seven on the bottom of your screen. You're watching the Havlin crew on the top of your screen. Two competing teams trying to win a race and win a championship. Watching the Havlin crew now. Right side, tires already going on. Left side, lug nuts coming off. They have fueled the car. They have yet to work on that body damage on the left rear of the Havlin car. Meanwhile, Ellen Kowicki cannot get his car in gear. Five gets in gear. Alan Quickie had exactly that same problem in Charlotte during the running of the Mellow Yellow 500. Made the pit stop. When they let the jack down, he let the clutch out. The car would not move. You can imagine what's wrong with that car, but he had exactly the same problem in Charlotte. 
was the first to uh, get off pit road. And Kyle Petty, according to my calculations here, gentlemen, is the only driver of the six who are in the points chase who had made a green flag pit stop. He was coming out of the pits just as the caution was coming out. Certainly it hurt Kyle Petty's chances of winning the championship here this afternoon. But again, we've got a long way to go as the second caution waves over Atlanta Motor Speedway. King Richard Petty in his final NASCAR Winston Cup race is currently in 26th position. 65 starts here in Atlanta. Six wins, 22 top five finishes. And we now recall another magical moment in Richard Petty's history in this Petty memory. Back at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and we are getting set to go green, but boy, the field looks pretty ragged, doesn't it? Yeah, They're not going to start them. They're no, not no, going to no, start them. No. no, they can't start them this way. See what happened. There were some of those drivers that had made pit stops under the green. They did not come in now. Bill Elliott is the leader of the race, but there's about four or five cars in front of him that technically are in the lead lap. Elliott was trying to pull up on the outside. He can't do that. He's got a line up behind those drivers who are still in the lead lap in front of him. See, Earnhardt is a lap down. He's two laps down. Thank you, buddy. He's two laps down. I mean, he's a lap down. And, uh, yeah. Two laps down, once later, we should go by. Does Alan Kowicki have a problem, Jerry? Bob, let's find out. We heard Alan having trouble leaving pit road. Danny Glad, is there a problem in the transmission? Yeah, Jerry, the, the problem we run into is on these bigger racetracks where we have to run a taller rear end ratio. Uh, we have to run a lower first gear to get the car moving, and it's a brittle gear. They make a real expensive gear just for the application. We run it, but it's just a very brittle, it's, it's hard on it. And we tore first gear out of transmission. We'll have to leave the pit road on, in second gear, but we'll be all right. Alan Kowicki, minus first gear, guys, early on. Let's take a look at the top five now. After 68 laps, it's Elliott leading. Kowicki is second, followed by Ricky Rudd, Mark Martin, and Harry Gann. Now, the points as of this moment. Allison is in sixth position, but still maintains the points lead. Kowicki is second, only 10 behind, and Bill Elliott is the leader of the race, and Elliott Kowicki right now tied in the points. Back for the start after this. Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Jerry Punch, and John Kernan welcome you back to Atlanta Motor Speedway, where we are about to go green as the largest sports crowd in Georgia history looks on. Restarting the Hooters 500, the final race of the 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Oh, you wouldn't believe the guy running about 10th is leading the race, but that's what's happening. Seriously injured, at least. 
You're exactly right, Bob. I was talking with his car owner, Leo Jackson, this morning. He said the car was great. Everything was great. The only thing that worried him, Harry had been sick all weekend with the flu. During that last caution period after making the pit stop, Harry radioed back in and said, hey, you might want to think about going and finding my school teammate, Rick Mass, to see if he will relief drive, drive for me if it gets to that point. But complicating that factor is the fact that Rick has finally got his car put back together. Rick is about out there on the racetrack. So Harry's hanging with it right now. We, there is no relief driver yet who's reported to his pit area, but we will keep you apprised of the situation. Rick Mast is on the racetrack. He's going very slowly. He was the point center on this race, certainly not on pace, but just trying to pick up some points in the standings. Looking back on Davey Allison from Richard Petty's and Carcass. Speed World 
today at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the Hooters 500, the finale of the 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup season. We are under our third caution period of the day because of Bob Shack's stalled car. And the field now on the back stretch, but this is how they came out of the pit area after their pit stops. First car we see on the end of pit road is Mark Martin. All these other cars coming in the pits. Jimmy Spencer was going out of the pits. Davey Allison comes out in first. Davey Allison is going to lead this race, Ned. And Davey up. Allison will pick up five bonus points. So evidently they changed two tires or something to get him back out in front. I think they did. Well, tonight here on ESPN, it's the battle of the New York Giants against the Denver Broncos. The FC West leading Broncos, led by strong arm quarterback John Elway, take on the five and four New York Giants, who are battling to capture an NFC wild card. Eight o'clock tonight, five on the West Coast, the Giants and the Broncos. NFL Sunday Night Football here on ESPN. Once again, today's race includes the Gillette Halfway Challenge, $10,000 to the driver leading the halfway lap, and a lucky fan at home could win a new Chevrolet Lumina Z34. If you have entered the contest for this race and your entry is selected, and you are called at home, you must name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge $10,000 reward to win the Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Now, let me tell you that the drivers that made up a lap, uh, including Ernie Irvin, the three car of Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, and Jeff Bodine. And there we see Bob Shack's car. They got the car started. He's now he's come to a stop again at the start finish line. So they got to get a record out to push him up. And we see the yeah, the Goodyear tires, the yellow, the Goodyear now is in yellow instead of the white we've seen for the last 15 years. So if you see these cars going down the racetrack and see yellow paint, it didn't come off of another race car. It came off. The tires are now yellow. Here's Jerry Punch. Guys, answering your question, Davey Allison did change just two tires, two right side tires. That'll explain that quick pit stop. And also explaining Alan Kowicki's problem. He does not have first gear, as you heard Danny Glad say. And remember, NASCAR rules prohibit a crew from pushing a car out of the pits. It's a safety move, but NASCAR will allow you to push a car if you've lost a gear. They have now given the Kowicki crew a chance to push their car out of the pits, and that probably saved Kowicki maybe five or six seconds getting the car moving here on this pit stop. Well, they were holding Bob Shack's car at the starting line. It did not stall. They were just holding it until the field came around. So we are still under our third caution of the day, and we'll return with more live action right after these messages. The final race for King Richard Petty and the decision on who wins the Winston Cup championship for 1992 here today at the Hooters 500 live from Atlanta Motor Speedway. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by the heartbeat of America Chevrolet and your local Chevy dealer. And by Goodyear number one in tires. Well, the number 11 car of Bill Elliott, the 7 car of Alan Kowicki, and the 28 car of Davey Allison, the top three in the points have now each led a lap, and so each has picked up the five bonus points. So They're we're back right, where they started. They're right back where they started, <laughs> exactly. Here comes the restart now. The green flag waves. And Jimmy Hensley is in second place. The Trump party forward. Martin third, Harry Gant fourth, and Elliott is fifth. Here comes Kyle Petty, the mellow yellow Pontiac, trying to get a lap back, trying to get by Davey Allison. Kyle, of course, was one of those guys who made a great flag pit stop just before the second caution came out. Dale Jarrett right there, he also was one of those drivers. But Mark Martin's going to take care of both of them. Thank you. 
suffering all that much. He's running a strong third. And he and Kyle Petty are one point apart. The answer is four. Kyle Petty and Petty are one point separating the two. And it's a difference at the banquet of $35,000. Oh, that's nothing. <laughs> Maybe not in your world it isn't, but uh, <laughs> the difference is first and second is 670. Oh, a crash! Down the front straightaway. Ken Schrader. Wally Dollar back. And Richard Petty is flaming going into turn number one. He's knocked the oil cooler off his car, and the oil is on fire. Richard Petty, the car is on fire. Petty has got the car out, stop. Bring it the extinguisher. It'll go out. He's yelling, that was Richard yelling to his crew, Fire. get a fire extinguisher down here. Yeah, they got you. I pulled up to the fire truck. Richards and I pulled to the fire truck. Well, I'll tell you, that's, that's a great yeah. presence of mine, right? And what a way for the career of Richard Petty to end. Let's not, let's not say right now, though, that his race is over. They could get the car back going, but I doubt it. Once again, Bevel Elliott got through a crash. I didn't see what happened in the crash. I just looked up and saw stuff flying. Yeah, Bill was up in front of it. Davey Allison was in front of the uh, front of the crash. Should have been about about mid pack, I guess. Because Dick Tripp, one of the cars in the crash, was running tenth before the before the crash. There's Darrell Walton. We can see some heavy damage yeah. to the Western Auto Chevrolet. Now the three cars here on the main straightaway and into turn one are. Dick Trickle, Ken Schrader, and Wally Dollenbach, and then Richard Petty's car is down in the turn as he, there is the king out of the car. And this may be the final farewell. But thank God he was able to walk away from it and wave to the fans. But you know, they ought to take the king back to the garage here and something better than the record. <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. It's not a quite a end of career that has been so great. Now here's the crash. That's Trickle. Ooh, Look at Dolan back get bumped around. And there's Richard Petty going in and hitting Darrell Walter. Looks like the rest of these cars able to slow down without too much trouble. And Richard driving down to the fire truck, like he said. There's an oil cooler up there, as I said, uh, right behind the left front fender. That was the hood I saw going up in the air that. The, Was that your eye level? <laughs> yeah, right when the crash started. Came off a Schrader's car, did it? Not sure. I think so, yes. Well, it almost blocked the track there for a moment. I would guess that someone came off the corner on the outside of another car, and the fella didn't know he was there. Made contact. And I don't. Six cars involved in the crash, and it's going to take a while to clean it up because there are a lot of damaged race cars and a lot of debris on the racetrack. It comes on lap number 96 of the Hooters 500 here in Atlanta. The Hooters 500 here at Atlanta Motor Speedway under the fourth caution period of the afternoon because of a Five make that six car crash here on the main straightaway that involved Daryl Waltrip, Dick Trickle, Ken Schrader, Richard Petty, Wally Donnerback, and Rich Bickle. And here is the replay. There we see the Ken Schrader car, the white car, spinning. Also, Dick Trickle, the dark car, spinning. As they go down the straightaway, other cars start going in the crash. There's Daryl Waltrip spinning. Donnerback hits him. Bickle's in the mix. And Daryl and Richard Petty runs into Darrell Walter, 
knocks the oil cooler off his car. The oil goes back on the exhaust system, and there's where the fire came from. Look at that hood way up in the air off Schrader's car. Schrader spinning, spinning. He finally comes to a stop. Well, Kenny Schrader got knocked around pretty good in that crash, and here's Jerry Punch. And the good news, Bob, is Kenny is okay. Kenny, what happened out there? Uh, Trick was right behind me, and I went in turn on top, and he was like in the middle, and I turned from the top to the middle to uh, get underneath Dale Jarrett, and he was must have been a little tight. We just we just run out of space coming off four. I mean, he caught me in the left rear just a little bit, but it's real real tight over there, and I was trying to get underneath somebody, and he was trying to get underneath me, and we just run out of space. Took some pretty heavy looks. Did you see Richard Petty come by? No, <laughs> no, I just saw a lot of smoke, a lot of stuff hitting. Ken Schrader's car heavily damaged. He's okay. We might mention that Wally Dahlenbach, Dick Trickle, and the other drivers have most of them have walked past here and smiled and waved, even in defeat, guys. And there's Ken Schrader's badly damaged Kodiak Chevrolet. He'll be back with the Rick Hendrick team in 1993. With AC Delco as the sponsor. Now here's a replay from the in-car camera of Richard Petty. Oh, this ought to be good. There's Dolan back right in front. Uh-oh, smoke. Oh, that's Trickley, I mean, Rich Bickley ran into. Mm -hmm. I thought it was Walter too. But well, he hit Waltrip after Bickle had yeah. hit Waltrip and, and spun him around, yeah. And you can see the uh, flames coming out. We'll take a look at it again here in a moment. The car of uh, Wally Dollenbach Jr. on the rollback. He took a good knock too. But everybody apparently is okay after six cars involved in a tangle here on the main straightaway. We'll be back with more in just a moment. We welcome you back on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. Just couldn't ask for more perfect weather than this to end the season. It's a little bit cool, but you expect that this time of year. But boy, after Thursday when we arrived here, when it was just pouring down rain, we wondered if it was going to be nice for today, but it is perfect racing weather. The points as of now. Allison is on top. He is running in second position. Alan Kowicki is fifth. Elliott is fourth. Gant third. Martin first. So you can see that the first five in, in uh, points there running in the top five. And Kyle Petty is running in 15th position. So as of right now, Davey Allison still on top in the battle for the Winston Cup. There's Wally Dollenbach Jr.'s badly damaged Keystone Ford that was involved in the accident here on the main straightaway. So it's not a beautiful day for some people Bob. Yeah that's for sure but the good news is that everybody is apparently OK from that crash. Again we had an accident on the second lap that sent uh, Brett Bodine to the hospital. Here's Jerry. Well we've already seen Davy Allison guys avoid a couple of incidents. He could certainly have been knocked out already in the first uh, 100 laps. You may be asking does Davy have a good luck charm. We've all seen rapid speed we've seen luck guys but guys have you seen a good luck pumpkin. That's what's in the Haviland pits now when they went to Phoenix a couple of weeks ago they picked this good luck pumpkin up at a Mexican restaurant on Friday. We all know what happened. He won the race reassumed the lead in the point championship. They painted a happy face on the front and they painted a sad face what's left of it on the back. Now this pumpkin has hit the wall a couple of times. You can take a look there but right now while Davey's running well they have the happy face showing and believe me folks this pumpkin has been guarded more than the race car the past two weeks so Davey's good luck charm so far working its magic. Yeah it's holding for him so far. Allison still on top of the point standings. You know as nervous as Davey was to begin the race I'm sure when he drove through that second lap crash and avoided that all the nervousness went away. He was no longer nervous. I mentioned also that Hutt Strickland also was sent to the local hospital in addition to Brett Bodine to be checked out for just the, an observation and the possibility of some injuries that they're not aware of here at the racetrack. Bill gets relined for the start. Business is fixing to pick up because we're going back green flag racing. Dale Earnhardt still a lap down to the leader, Mark Martin. Pulls up alongside Martin. He's going to try to get his lap back. He's at 15th position, Benny. There are 14 cars now on the lead lap. 
And if you're just joining us and you've noticed that uh, Ned isn't saying a whole lot today, it's not because he's mad at us, I don't think. <laughs> Ned is suffering from some uh, laryngitis and uh, couldn't utter hardly a sound yesterday and last night, but we're glad you got at least what you got today. <laughs> it's amazing, the biggest race of the year. <laughs> not the way it goes. Go away, yeah. As they're getting ready to go to restart, Darrell Walters car sitting on the pit road and they're trying to adjust the toe in on it. Attendance here will far exceed last year's attendance of 122,300. The track officials estimated they would sell 60,000 hot dogs, 40,000 hamburgers, 100,000 sodas, 800 pizzas, 40,000 cups of coffee, and 40,000 cups of hot chocolate for this event. And that was before they learned that Benny would be having lunch here. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> Green flag waves.
with the key. Well, Richard Petty is sitting down here in the garage area. Richard, they're working on the car. Apparently, you're okay, but you're going to try and get the SDP Pontiac fixed. Well, we're looking to see what's going on. It busted the oil cooler and the radiator and it caught on fire, and I drove down there to a fire truck and got it put out. Uh, but I don't know that when, the, when I busted the oil cooler that it didn't run out of oil and mess up the bearings. So first thing I got to do is put it back together and then crank it up and still got oil pressure. We might go out and run a few laps. Uh, the oil pressure's messed up naturally, that's all over with, but no front fenders or nothing on it right now. It's tore up pretty bad. You know, you'd rather go out in a blaze of glory, but you're almost out in a blaze today. Yeah, it was, wasn't the kind of blaze of glory I wanted to go out in, but uh, the main, main thing is nobody got hurt in the wreck, and I've spent 35 years doing this, and I'm still walking around talking, so uh, the good Lord looked after me for a long time. Now, we, if you if you don't get it fixed to get back out, will you still be hanging around for the end of the race uh, ceremonies that were scheduled? Well, we'll sort of play that beer, scoring what everybody wants to do, and uh, we'll take care of everybody. All right, Richard Petty, despite the car catching on fire and sitting here in the garage in his last race, manages to flash that famous Petty smile. And I hope that they can get that car back out. But now that those tires have heated up, Earnhardt is running that high groove again, and he's been able to pull away just a little bit. Let's watch the telemetry one more time. 183. 190 miles an hour just at the end of the back straightaway. And that was just about the same as it was early in the race, as the sun will start to play a factor in this race, and in fact it is already. I tell you what, it's going to be miserable at the last 100 miles of this race. The drivers will be driving in turn three with very little, very little visibility. It's easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Elliott has just taken third position from Harry Gant. Gant is fourth, Kawicki is fifth, and the top five are all in the points race. This is an incredible adventure on a Sunday afternoon for NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, and we're delighted. Zip right on by almost effortlessly. Bill Elliott now is in second position, and Davey Allison is back to what, sixth? Yep, back in sixth spot. We're getting closer to the halfway lap. If you have entered the Gillette Halfway Challenge and you are called at home and can name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Second place man Bill Elliott and Dale Earnhardt continues just to inch away a little bit from Mark Martin. Earnhardt just hoping for a caution. He's already made up one lap, now wants to make up the other one. Earnhardt might have the fastest car on the racetrack currently. Yep.
the points as of right now. Allison on top by 15. He's sixth in the race. Kobuki is third. Then Elliott, Martin, Gant, and Kyle Petty, who's having the worst race among those. Kyle Petty is in 18th position. There's the leader of the race, Mark Martin. And he's moved from sixth to fifth in the points as of right now. That's a bit second place car. And then third, Kowicki, and fourth, Ricky Rudd. Martin won this race last year, didn't he? Yes, he did. He sure did. When Dale Earnhardt won the second straight championship. Second Winston Cup. He did it in 1988. 
takes the lead. One in turn three. Bill Elliott just pulls up on the outside. Martin realizes he's there as they come off the corner. Elliott has the momentum and just goes right by. Not too long after that, Alan Kowicki took the second position away from Mark Martin. Now here's Davey Allison involved in a battle with Jeff Bodine, the number 15. Lake Speed is also right there. And the number 12 car driven by Jimmy Spencer. Spencer having another great run in Bobby Allison's car, currently shown in eighth spot. And this battle between Davey Allison and Jeff Bodine is for six. He's heading towards you. 
Absolutely not. And uh, this is a scheduled pit stop for Dale Earnhardt. He is pitting down at the far end of pit road, right beside where they are waiting for Martin Martin to come in. In fact, Martin should be coming in next time by. Earnhardt brings the Goodrich Chevrolet to a stop. And he had come from two laps down. The car running very well. They think that it may not have been a valve spring, quite honestly. They now think it may have a pinhole in the header causing the, the car to shudder a little bit. That's why the car is still running as well as it is. They have changed right side tires. Now put the left side Goodyear Eagles on. Back with the lug nuts, fill it up with fuel, get ready to pull the jack, and Earnhardt is away. Now he'll find himself until the leader spin, about two laps down. He made it three extra laps, but the car was just going away. So now he brings the valve in punt Ford Thunderbird to a stop on pit road. Right side tire going up. Very, very diligently cleaning the windshield. Remember, as the sun gets lower here in the afternoon, that is the critical part of the pit stop. Getting that windshield cleans the driver can see. Now left side tire is going up. That will be able to correct that loose race car. All rushed up to the He is down and away. 24 second pit stop for Mark Martin as he stays below that white line and gets it back on the track. John Kern and Ricky Rudd is in. It's a four tire change for Ricky Rudd. Talk with Gary Dehart, the crew chief. Moments ago about the power steering. It is out. He thinks maybe a belt could have fallen off, gotten knocked off. So Ricky does not have power steering. Having to adjust the way he drives the race car. Right's already on. Left side's going on. They had hoped to get a caution so they can check under the hood. But Ricky will just take on four tires and two cans of fuel. He's down and away heading towards turn one. Pit stop. Jeff Martin rolls off a of pit road behind Ricky, so does Sterling Marlin. There's Jeff going out of the pits right now, and here comes Sterling. He's already gotten four new tires on the Maxwell House floor and is building back up to speed as he heads into turn number one. Jim shift in the third gear. Play with the gas. Now you drop them on the back, you'll shift in the fourth gear. Well, Kowicki about to come into the pits. His crew there ready for it with the board out. And when he does, he'll relinquish second position. Seven on the bottom of your screen, 28 on the top. They have already put the left side tire down on the car. He pushes into the fifth. The car does fire and pulls away. They are still now working on the Davy Allison Haviland Ford Thunderbird. Our point leader getting left side tire through very, very deliberate to make sure every one does his practice. Then he puts it back in gear, spins the tires, and he's away. Terry in the Sunoco car. John Curtin right there. 
This will be another four tire change, making sure that they get the windshield clean. Paul Becca, the PR man out there, actually doing windshield service today. Right side's already on, left's going on. Jimmy Spencer, guys, is a car to watch. He just came in and only changed right side tires one lap ago. Terry Labonte is now finished with pit work, and he is headed down pit road. Jerry, thank you, Steve. Steve headed to the garage area here, talking to his driver, and apparently the day is over, and so is the championship hunt for Mark Martin. And so there are now five still in contention for the NASCAR Winston Cup, as Mark Martin, who won this race last year and who came into this event sixth in the points, out the pipe. 13 behind Davey Allison, coasts down pit road, and will be, we presume, turning in to the garage area. He's still on pit road and in fact is going to keep going. I didn't break your crankshaft because it wouldn't be turning 4,000 RPMs with a broken crankshaft. Nope. He has some other problem. There's the leader, Ernie Irvin. He has not pitted yet here. He's got a good gas mileage on that sure is. Jerry, I uh, got an update. Guys, if Mark Martin came by us on pit road, I was standing beside Steve Mill, who was running toward the garage area. We both stopped. The car came by, was sputtering. It seemed to catch fire, started sputtering again, so Mark continued back on the racetrack. They're hoping possibly it may be something less than inside the as they get the halfway point here in the season finale. And while all that was going on, we get a better indication of why Ernie Urban stayed out on the racetrack as long as he could because the halfway lap has arrived. And Ernie Irvin is about to pick up $10,000 as the leader at the halfway point and winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge. And across flags, Ernie Irvin is the leader and the winner of the Halfway Challenge. He takes home the $10,000 reward, and if you have entered the contest and are called at home, and you can correctly identify the winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you could win a Chevrolet Lumina Z34. Again, the name to tell them, Ernie Mark Martin's car is behind the wall. And Bill Elliott, who has made his pit stop, finds himself in fourth position. Back up to speed. But Irvin coming into the pits. Ted Musgrave had stayed out there. He was ahead of Elliott, but he's coming in right now. And it looks 
Looks like Jeff Gordon might have a problem on the back stretch. He's going very slow. Maybe run out of gas. Don't slow down Pitt Road. He is Ernie Irvin. Jerry. And somewhat of an obstacle. He has to go around the car of Lake Speed and installed on Pitt Road. And also get around the car of Morgan Shepard from here. The Kodak crew working on Ernie Irvin's car. We mentioned Ernie Irvin won $10,000 for leading the halfway point. A $25,000 bonus just went to Davey Allison for winning the most halfway point this year in the Gillette program. The only other ones who could have gotten that were Bill Elliott and Alan Wood. But by Ernie Irvin winning the 10 grand as you watch his car exit at Pit Road in a little over uh, 20 seconds with four tires. That would give a $25,000 bonus to Davey Allison. Jeff Gordon is on pit road. His car very slowly down the back stretch. He was able to make it into the pits, and may, might he have run out of fuel? No, you don't know. They haven't put any in it yet. He stopped just a few laps okay. ago, so he did not run out of fuel. Evidently, had a flat tire or something wrong with one of the tires. Probably had a vibration. Didn't know which one it was, and so he's uh, putting all four on. Davey Allison working his way through the traffic, racing with Sterling Marlin. There is Bill. in this 1992 season <laughs> Like I've told you many times, we sure look like Jerry and I sometimes. Standing here with Mark Martin in the garage area. And uh, Mark, we can see on the telemetry, your RPM's just cut right now down to about 4,000. You know what happened? It acted like it burned a piston or something. Uh, started smoking out the pipes. And you know, the, the 42 and the 33 were at full song. There wasn't much we could do. We could have tried to run 60, 70 miles an hour around a racetrack. And, Offended NASCAR and everybody else, but we weren't going to be able to do anything about the situation. But you know, just park it, and I'd have to just say I'm awful proud of Jack Roush and Steve Mill and this whole Valvoline team. And I want to thank uh, Goodyear for putting us on the greatest, greatest radials I've ever driven on here, and and uh, and thank uh, uh, Folgers for hanging in there with us this year. We've had a real good year, and we've got a lot to look forward to next year. That's right, they certainly do have a lot to look forward to. In fact, Steve Neal says they're already working towards 1993. Bob? Two wins in 1992 for Mark Martin at Martinsville and at Charlotte. And his year is over as the Valvoline Ford is behind the ball. Well, things have kind of settled down here as we have completed 174 laps on this event. Bill Elliott is leading over Alan Kowicki. We'll be back in just a moment. watches their driver very closely. They have been told that there may be a problem with the car. Now there is Rusty Wallace on the racetrack trying to pass him. Davey hasn't seemed to uh, have slowed up very much. But we'll watch that situation very carefully. Jerry, can you update us? While we were in commercial, Bob, Davey just yelled to the crew, I think I've run over something on the track and cut a left front tire. They all scampered up to the pit wall with tires. Davey said, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, I, I may not be cut. It may just be a vibrating exhaust pipe. So he ran another lap. He backed off the throttle for about half a lap. And he gave back the full throttle. I think it's okay, guys. We were going to be all right. So they just, everyone's heart skipped a beat down here in the half of the pit. But he has dropped from sixth to ninth position. Any love? 
love it all for auto racing and for the king because we're going to present a very important and special program portrait of a king that will be immediately following our live telecast of this Hoover's 500. Dave Despain will be hosting that program and it is a dandy. Elliot. The Georgia native in front of his hometown fans leads the Hooters 500. Alan Kowicki not too far behind in second place. He's only about 15 car lengths behind Bill. He's steadily inch by inch gaining on the Budweiser Ford. And I mean inch by inch. That's basically what it is, just inches. Not too far in front of saw him there, Harry Gant is about to go a lap down. Dale Earnhardt just went around there again. So he has made up a lap on it really. Earnhardt's still running out in front of Elliott. And so now Gant has dropped to 12th. Earnhardt is 11th, but not too far from going a lap down. This car is definitely off the pace a little bit now from what it was earlier. There's Dale Earnhardt, who led earlier in this event, then lost a lap and gained it back. Lost two laps, really. He was yeah. down two laps at one time, but got to... And there's Harry Gant, who is 12th, and the last car on the lead lap as Bill Elliott tries now to lap him, making it just 11 cars. Well, he closed right up on the back of Harry Gant, and here he goes on the outside of Harry. Puts him a lap down. Dave Marcus, now he'll try to pass him. Dave is running in 19th position. By the way, if you're just joining us, it's 3 o'clock Eastern Time. And if you are just joining us, the situation is that King Richard Petty went out in a blaze of glory, but not the blaze that he wanted to. The car caught fire after he was involved in an accident here on the main straightaway. Richard is okay. However, the car is out of the race. Bill Elliott leads this event. Alan Kowicki is in second position. Davey Allison is in eighth. So it's still very much a heated points battle. Now our Western Auto Race Recap. Bill Elliott has led 60 of the 184 laps. There have been four caution periods for a total of 29 circuits. There are 12 cars make that a lead on the lead lap as Harry Gant has gone to lap down. Eight leaders and 16 lead changes in the average speed is a little over 127 miles an hour. The drivers who have picked up five bonus points for leading include Martin, who is out of the race, Earnhardt, Elliott, Urban, Allison, Kowicki, Jeff Bodine, and Brett Bodine, who led the first lap, but then was involved in a multi-car tangle down in turn number one on the second lap. Out of the race, Strickland and Brett Bodine were both taken to a local hospital to be checked up. They were not seriously injured. Stanley Smith, Dick Trickle, Ken Schrader, Bob Jack, Richard Petty, Wally Dallenbach, Rich Bickle, and Jeff Gordon have all gone to the garage area. Jeff Gordon, the most recent. Tony Glover leads the mechanic of the year standings from Western Auto as we see Harry Gant in the pits in the upper left of your screen. Steve Meal is second in the mechanic of the year standings, followed by Donnie Richardson, Danny Glad, and Tim Brewer. Not schedule pit stop for Harry Gant on his whole event at Lisbonville. Slowed on the racetrack, not dramatically, but he was definitely off the pace a little bit. Apparently had a vibration or something, and uh, could be a bad shot. Uh, but he thought maybe it could be tires, so they changed all four tires. Obviously. Keeping you updated on the point situation all race long. If they were awarded right now, Allison would have a two-point two. victory, <laughs> and Elliott and Kowicki would be tied, tied for two a second. points behind. Wow, you can't get much closer than this. Here's wow. Jerry Punch. Guys, you think we're watching it upstairs? I'm in the Davey Allison pit. Now, this sheet, statistical sheet you're looking at right here was developed by Bob Lafford, who actually helped develop the current point system way back in 1975. We have Davey Allison in this column, Alan Kowicki and Bill Elliott. Davey Allison currently won an eighth spot. That's how many points he would have. And if you turn and look at Alan Kowicki in second or at Elliott in first, that's what he would have. So they are watching very closely. A statistical
eligible charter to see every single spot counts and every single heart is beating rather quickly here in the Allison Pen. And thank goodness for people like Nelson Crozier who is holding that sheet. And Nelson's one of those behind the scenes guys that play a very valuable role in presenting these NASCAR Winston Cup telecasts to you throughout the season. Bill Elliott of the Budweiser Ford leads the Hooters 500 as Jeff Gordon has dropped out of her at his first NASCAR Winston Cup race. We all know that glare can become a serious problem for a driver late in the afternoon. Well, in years past, the solution was quite simple. You merely tint a major portion of the right side of your windshield, thereby minimizing the glare from the setting sun across the turn. See, NASCAR thought this may be a safety hazard because a driver following behind Richard Petty and his STP Pontiac might not be able to see through this heavily tinted area to a car spinning or maybe a blown engine up front. So in 1992, they said no more tint across the bulk of the windshield. You basically have been limited to a factory tinting job. The upper five inches here is all you can tint. This increases visibility for cars and drivers following Richard Petty. They can see through the front of his windshield to a possible problem up front, but also they can see inside the cockpit now as Richard may decide to use a hand signal to wave and say, hey, I've got a problem or I'm slowing down. Both cars in front and behind can see that. So a new 1992 NASCAR rule to improve safety on the racetrack. And that's a very important piece of information because of the sun that becomes a major problem here in the late afternoon and we are just about to that point. There's no problem now, we're going down to turn one. Watch this, if we can stay with him until he gets to the back straightaway, you're going to see just what a problem he can be. We're only about halfway of the race, just a little over halfway, it's going to get worse every minute until the end of the race. Now he goes into turn three. We can see as he drives into the sun, and as I said, it gets worse every lap. They're going to Shepard right now, Bob, is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. The Citgo Ford is really running fast, but he's three laps down, unfortunately, but whatever the problem was, they got it fixed. Yeah, he has his 22nd position, but back up to speed. Here's an auto light field summary for you. Watch for your favorite driver. Another great run for Jimmy Spencer up in third spot. And look at Davey Allison back in eight. Eleven cars are on the lead lap. The last car on the lead lap is Dale Earnhardt. Very good. Now two laps down. Bobby Hillen in the 90 car, sponsored today by Wrangler. Wrangler Jeans that was on our sponsor for so long. Lake Speed now finds himself eight laps down. going earlier, but obviously the car not performing up this time. He's got eight laps off the pace. And there we see Earnhardt and Bill Elliott about to put Earnhardt another lap down. Eight lap down. Yeah. Eight lap down. Yeah. Right now, Earnhardt is in the lead lap. Lead lap is going to lap down. Watch as he goes high. Elliott running on the bottom of the racetrack. And here, Allison about to lose, lose another spot. And if Sterling Marlin gets by, that would put who? Alan Kowicki in the lead for the Winston Cup. He's only two points ahead. It's four points, the difference in these two spots. If Sterling Marlin can't get by. Well, let's say that we have Elliott and Allen tied for the lead. Yeah, or I mean, second, second. second. Right. So that would put Elliott in the lead. Because Elliott has more victories than Allen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's something we talked about just a moment ago. Indeed, it is going to be very, very critical this summer. Let me show you what's going on here in the Davy Allison pit. They are getting very concerned about what's happening in the point battle. Davy's car not handling well. Gary Beveridge, Ryan Pemberton, and Joey Knuckles are building an aluminum patch for that brush panel 
the left rear of the car. Now they take a piece of aluminum and they have cut it. And now listen to Ryan Pemberton. They're saying the car catches wind going in the corner, pitches to one side, causing Davey to lose a lot of time. They're going to try to come in on the next scheduled stop, pull the left rear fender away, put this aluminum patch in, and hope that it works. Well, you pull out all stops in the final race. A lot of thoughts are being traded down there. We'll see what they do when Davey comes in for his next pit stop. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine has gotten around Sterling Marlin, and now Jeff has his sights set on Davey. And he is much faster than Davey Allison right now. Race for eight spot. Oh, and a car the wall. It's Dale Earnhardt in turn two. And this is the caution that Davey needed to come in and get that work done if they're going to do it. Boy, oh, boy. Davey are living right today. Gets a caution flag at the right time. Bill Elliott had just put a lap on Dale Earnhardt. Earnhardt's car is moving at the bottom of the racetrack down the back stretch, but he made contact with the wall in turn two. Looks and like the, the left side pretty flat. Looks like the left side has been flattened out on that race car. Yep. It's our fifth caution of the day, and it comes on lap 203. Because we're 125 laps away from the conclusion of this race. Joey Knuckles wearing the crew cam, waiting on Davey to come in. We see Larry McReynolds, that's Larry the crew chief talking to Davey. Telling Davey what they're planning on doing when he comes in the pitch. Still talking to Davey. Now the pace car has picked up the field. So the next time they'll be coming in the pits. The pits will be open there as the pace car with the field in tow. Coming through corner number three now as Davey Allison catches up to the rear of the field. You think you've seen confusion before? Just <laughs> Whiteley gets in the pits and they start trying to drill holes and pop rivet and tape and... Man, oh man. <laughs> I wish I was there just to watch it. <laughs> we see it's got some damage on the left front of that car. Something's hit the left front. Well, Elliot, Kowicki, Spencer, Irvin, Rudd, <laughs> Rusty Wallace, Terry Labonte, Allison, Jeff Bodine, and Sterling Marlin all are on pit road. Jerry Davey is coming to you. And pit road is extremely busy right now. Here is Davey Allison in the pits, and the crew are now going to work. Oh, 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 and the crew the crew cam. Now you want to join up to rip off that right front tire. Put the right front tire back in place. Meanwhile, the crew now hustling around, trying to pull some of the air down out of the front of the car. And now it's And Elliot and Kowicki have exited pit road. Still working there on the Davey Allison.
And if points were awarded right now, Bill Elliott and Alan Kowicki would tie in points for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship, and Elliott would get the crown because he's won more races. Allison, who is currently 10th in the standings, would finish in third. Two hundred and six laps completed. Bill Elliott leading the race. Alan Kowicki running second. We're seeing a race for a million bucks. If that seven can pass the eleven, it's worth about a million four. Whoa! That's pretty good. Sound, That's pretty strong, isn't it? <laughs> Just about to go green in the Hooters 500. The green will come out on lap 208. Kowicki knows that. He'd have a heart attack if he did. So don't tell him.
Heavyweight Championship. The grand finale of the NASCAR Winston Cup season for 1992, the Hooters 500, live from Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton, Georgia. We're delighted you can be with us. Our Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Autolite Spark Plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. By Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. And by Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. Well, a whale of a view comes to us from Airship Shamu. The blimp represents SeaWorld Parks in Florida, California, Ohio, and Texas. Get it? Whale of a view, Benny. And as of now, Alan Kowicki has the Winston Cup by three points over Allison. Bill Elliott, who is running fourth in the race, would finish third in the point standings. Davey has just passed Sterling Marlin. Which now puts him back in front by one point. <laughs> it's, okay. it's too tough to keep up with. It is so close. Well, of course, there are five other points to be factored in here if one of those drivers lead the most laps, yeah. which that has not been determined yet. Bill Elliott probably has led more up to this point than he has. Spencer graciously backs up, lets him take the spot away. I believe this set of tires might have uh, been a little bit tight on Elliott's car now that they're getting heated up. It seems to be coming back in a little bit. Elliott is in third. Kowicki is the leader. Davy Allison running seventh. As the points battle has boiled down to these three drivers, Mark Martin is already out of the race if you're just joining us. Richard Petty also retired from competition and not the way he wanted to. It was an off the crash. He's okay, but out of his last Winston Cup race. Back in just a moment. Welcome back to 
Atlanta Motor Speedway where Alan Kowicki in the Hooters 4 leads the Hooters 500. And the average speed of the race at this point is a little over 131 miles an hour. Bill Elliott is on the move. He has taken over second place from Ernie Irvin. I do in the front row of the cars and made pit stops. Jimmy Spencer just came in. Looks like he's topped the gas tank off. That doesn't make sense. What was that all about? I don't know. And uh, Sterling Marlin was just in. They changed tires on his car. All kinds of interesting things going on here. And it has been an interesting race to this point. It got off on a very bad note because as they completed lap number one, we had the first crash of the race. It involved Brett Bodine in number 26 and the pole sitter. Rick Mass, Bodine with hard contact on the outside wall. Hutch Strickland came along and hit Brett very, very hard. Both of those two drivers have been sent to a local hospital. During the fracas, it was Hutch Strickland who hit the left rear of Davey Allison's car, upsetting the car somewhat. However, Davey has not let it bother him too much. Then later in the race, another multi-car tangle as Dick Trickle and Ken Schrader came down, also involved. Daryl Walter, Wally Dallenbach Jr., and King Richard Petty. You can see flames from a car in the middle of the straightaway. He took the car down to the inside of the racetrack and, in fact, parked it near a fire truck. But Richard Petty ended the final race of his 35-year career in that way. Richard was not injured, but it was a spectacular way to end a long and illustrious career. And this is how it looked from Richard Petty's perspective. He hit Rich Pickle in the back end, also made contact with another car, and then the flames became evident from the left front of the race car. Come on, get ready to fire! Fire extinguisher! Richard Petty directing the fire extinguishers. And now we move to more recent activity as Alan Kowicki was able to pass Bill Elliott just a few laps ago and take the lead of the Hooters 500. And that's the situation as we speak. Alan Kowicki is in front, Bill Elliott is running second, and Ernie Irvin is running in third position. There's a live shot of Alan Kowicki down in turns one and two, next in turn two. He's doing everything he can to win a championship. Davey Allison, meanwhile, doing everything he can to protect his championship. Allison has now worked his way up to sixth spot. And those two incidents that you mentioned, namely uh, the pit stops by Spencer and Sterling Marlin, Sterling Marlin actually helped Davey. Oh, yeah, moving up to position, that's 10 points. There's Bill Elliott. laps of anyone looking for the 28 car there he is just ahead of Ricky Rudd and Taz Rudd and Rudd did fix his power steering problem the last time yeah they had the hood up on the tie triple and they did uh, make some repairs let's find out why Jimmy Spencer came in for some gas John Complicated than that, Bob. He came down on pit road because there was a big piece of paper stuck to the grill, and the engine was overheating. He may have stayed out a little bit too long because the crew just told me that they think the motor's about to blow. And also, Sterling Marlin changed four tires. He apparently felt like he had one going down. That's the update on the uh, 12 car. Sterling Marlin's mention also came in for an unscheduled pit stops, and both of those came just 30 laps after their regularly scheduled pit stops. We may be a little premature in telling you that Richard Petty is out of the race because they're working on the car. Hopefully, he'll be on the track when the checkered flag drops. If points were awarded right now, Davey Allison would be champion, Kowicki second, and Bill Elliott third.
afternoon at Atlanta Motor Speedway because of a blown engine on the number 90 car driven by Bobby Hillen Jr. Dumped down some oil here on the main straightaway and that brought out the caution flag. And so it's an opportunity for these drivers to come in once again and get some fresh tires and some gasoline on the 242 lap mark. I don't, I don't think they'll be able to make it the rest of the way on this fuel so there'll be at least one more stop. Here comes the leader Kowicki down pit road. Here's Elliot. And Jerry Punch will be calling these pit stops. And Benny answering your question first. They will not be able to make it all the way unless Bill Elliott gets extra very good cast mileage. We're talking about 86 laps from here to lap 328 as they make their way down pit road. Seven on top of your screen, 11 on the bottom. Seven come 11. They're rolling the dice here in Atlanta. Watch the crews go to work as Alan Kowicki's Hooters crew will change four tires on the top of your screen. All the Budweiser crew now going to work on Bill Elliott's car on the bottom. These two drivers vying for $1.4 million here in the last 86 laps at Atlanta. Here's car number seven exiting pit road. Four tires being changed there. And you see them from turn one. They all are scampering back on the track. And Kowicki beats Elliott back on the racetrack, and they resume positions here under the caution. Just barely did he beat Bill Elliott out. <laughs> And Rusty Wallace comes out in third position. We'll take another break while we are under caution from the Hooters 500. And Top 10, Alan Kowicki leads, Bill Elliott, Rusty Wallace, Ernie Irvin, Terry Labonte. Six through 10, Davey Allison, Ricky Rudd, Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, and Kyle Petty. Beautiful overhead view of Atlanta Motor Speedway as a record crowd has gathered to watch this event. If points were awarded right now, Davey Allison would win the Winston Cup. Kowicki would finish second, then Elliott, Kyle Petty, Harry Gant, and Mark Martin. Davey Allison sixth, Kowicki is the leader, and Elliott is second at this point. Now tonight on ESPN, at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 5 o'clock Pacific, it's the New York Giants against the Denver Broncos. Don't miss it. NFL action tonight on ESPN, the Giants and the Broncos. We'll have more of our live coverage from Atlanta Motor Speedway after this. Caution of the day at Atlanta Motor Speedway, and our congratulations to Kenny Henderson, 41 year old from Cleveland, Alabama, who knew that Ernie Irvin was leading at the halfway point and won a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. We congratulate Kenny Henderson. He'll be tooling around the streets of Cleveland, Alabama, in a brand new Chevrolet Lumina C34. Well, there have been pit stops made, but now there is some very interesting strategy regarding what we do from this point forward. Jerry Punch with an explanation. Bob, you think your calculator is busy? Behind me, Danny Glad and the crew are working to try to get the pit calculation done. They pitted with 86 laps to go. They know they can make it about 64 or 65 laps on fuel. That brings them on pit road on lap 306 to 308 with 20 or 22 laps remaining. The big question mark then, what do they do? Gas only, two tires, and that's going to be the big gamble that could determine who wins the Winston Cup title. All those questions and a lot more will be answered here in the next hour or so as we get down to the conclusion of this race. The big question, of course, who is going to win the NASCAR Winston Cup title is still very much undecided at this point. time around and will resume the Hooters 500 being led at the moment by Alan Kowicki. Now I have a couple of laps ago and Kowicki has led both of those. Elliott had led 85 laps. Martin 47. Earnhardt 44. And now Kowicki has led 41. If those of you who are keeping the uh, bonus point situation because the leader of the most laps will pick up five uh, extra points and that could be the determining factor. Well, right now that would tie if Davey Austin is in sixth spot. That would tie 
Alan Kowicki and Davey Allison. Allison will still be the champion because he's won more races than Kowicki, but man, it is so close. I'm telling you, this is something. It was everything that we had hoped it would be. Two rest formation being uh, aligned on the backstretch. Now Penn is a lap down. Still has a fast car. Hasn't been quite fast enough to get back in the lead lap. There are nine cars on the lead lap. Kyle is 10th. Look at Elliott. <laughs> Giving uh, Allen a little encouragement, huh? He's not trying. He's not going to let Allen get any advantage on him, is he? <laughs> so Davy Allison, pace car comes in. We're set to go green once again on lap 250. Look at the crowd here. They're loving every minute of it. Green flag waves. Here we go again. so much their Ernie goes up high we see the four car and all of a sudden the car just goes around he loses control when he saves it he comes back right in front of Davy Allison I think that was the only two cars involved in the crash so often uh, we're criticized for uh, showing partiality to one driver or another I really have no concerns as to who wins the championship the best man will win it I'm glad to see the Davy Allison's out of the car okay. Yeah, he knows his, yep, it's his over. championship hopes are over. But there will be other years. There's no question about that. And I'm sure as Davy will tell you, if we do have an interview with him, he waves to the fans as he gets in the ambulance that uh, regardless of what has happened here, he's had a tremendous season. Once again, we'll watch Rusty Wallace. Ernie goes by when he gets the car sideways. Rusty gets by. 
comes back across the racetrack right directly in front of Davy Allison. Jerry Punch. Guys, obviously the mood here in the Davy Allison pit is quite somber, but let me tell you what Larry McReynolds said. You talk about a competitor. Now, Larry McReynolds is the crew chief for Davy Allison. He turned and said, guys, the championship may be over, but we're going to fix this car and still fight for third, fourth, fifth, somewhere in the points. We're not going to quit. And off they took running up pit road to try to wait for the car to be pulled in. So believe me, there is no quit here in this Havlin team. And only for the second time since 1979 will the points leader going into this final race not win the Winston Cup championship. Davy Allison's Texaco Havlin Ford is on the record, headed back toward the garage area. Davy Allison is in the ambulance. He'll be checked over at the infield medical center, but he was okay when he got out of the car, waving to the fans as they saluted his attempt to win the Winston Cup that has come to an end here near lap 254. We'll take a break and be back with more from Atlanta Motor Speedway. right away right at the start finish line here in Atlanta as the seventh caution period remains out because of the accident involving Ernie and Davy Allison whose championship hopes are now over. This is how it happened. Watch Ernie Urban whose car is up high on the racetrack. Right in the center of the racetrack the yellow car. He loses control. Comes across the racetrack when he saves it it goes back across the racetrack right in front of Davy Allison. And again, that was the only two cars involved. And, and that's how it ended for Davy. There's Liz, Davy's wife. Ryan Vandercook there, who does public relations for uh, Haviland, Texaco. You can see that Liz obviously is very disappointed. Been an emotional year for all of the Allisons. I wanted to say at the top of the show, whoever has the least amount of bad luck. That is right. That's the way it's been the last few races. Not somebody winning the championship, but somebody losing it. And the car goes back into the garage. Ryan Pemberton right there closest to us. Coming close from issue with the Jack stands. They'll take a look if they can get the car repaired. They'll uh, put it back out there and maybe Davey can complete a few more laps and maintain a good finish in the point standings. NASCAR Winston Cup points as of right now. Alan Kowicki on top by 10 over Bill Elliott. Davey has fallen to third. Right now, a 19th in the serial scoring. Kyle Petty is 8th, Harry Gant 17th, and Mark Martin is already out of the race. And by the way, being factored into those point standings are the number of laps being led. Now, the green flag comes out, and we resume our competition with Alan Kowicki leading Elliott. It's down to a shootout between those two drivers. We're watching from the roof cam, Morgan Shepard. Get 
tough break. Bill Elliott doesn't have to race with Morgan. He just drives by. Well, I said he was going to race with him. Here comes Morgan back. That way back to the inside and the out. Spent at least a half car length ahead of Bill in the middle of the back stretch. But now Elliott pulls away in the corners. Big speed still in the race. Good race. Sometimes we had had some troubles and we're trying to work our way back up there, just trying to run a smart race and uh, ran over something in turn three earlier in the race. And we had to, to come in and repair the car from that. We caught a lucky caution flag and I thought, all right, we're going to be okay now. And then I saw Ernie get loose over there in four and, you know, we just ran out of room. You know, I hate it. I hate it for all of them guys in the, in the garage area. Everybody at Robert Yates Racing deserves a lot better than this. And, you know, they deserve to win that championship this year, and we didn't get it, so we'll just go back and we'll get ready for next year, and we'll come out and try again. It just wasn't meant to be. Yeah, but Davey, with the, the up and down year you've had, you've certainly showed a championship heart. Well, we appreciate all the support everybody has showed us, and you know, uh, the fans have been great. All the letters of encouragement, the, the phone calls and everything have been fantastic, and you know, we want to tell everybody we appreciate that, but this wasn't our year. Davey Allison carried a great deal of momentum into 92 from the 91 season, and I think he'll keep that momentum going as we head for 1993. Didn't win the championship, but gave it everything he could. We'll be right back. Clifford Allison's uh, the children's phone. 
Money well spent then. Ever seen Rusty Wallace, Jimmy Spencer, and Ricky Rudd a race four, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Bill Elliott has led 85 laps right now. Alan Kowicki has led 80, or rather 66. So Alan, if he leads the next 20 or so, will then become at least the person that would get the uh, bonus points as in that moment. I tell you what, I appreciate when people do all they can do. And I'm looking at two guys right now that's doing all they can possibly do. Every inch around that racetrack, they're going as hard as they can possibly go. Getting the gas wide open as soon as they can, letting off as late as they can. They're on the qualifying lap. Every lap, trying desperately to win a race and a championship. And Jerry Punch has a comment on pit road. Benny, you and Ned and Bob are exactly right. Bill Elliott has been told that he needs to pass the seven car. Well, he's what he's trying to do. Every lap with every ounce of horsepower that Budweiser for the muscle. Alan Kowicki has been told by Danny Glad and the crew he must keep the 11 car behind him because if he gets passed, he may not lead the most laps and he may lose the race and the championship. So these guys are running wide open these last few laps. This is what a championship is all about. It could come down to the four is that Bill Elliott won in the beginning of the season. He had uh, an incident at Daytona. He was very much a contender in that race. But then after Daytona, he won four in a row. And it could come down to the number of races won this year if the points are tied when the green, the checkered flag drops. Is that piece of tape on yeah. the grill? Here's Earnhardt going to lap down. Laps led to date. Bill Elliott has led 85 for Wiki. 70. If Allen can lead 30 more laps and give him 100, Bill Elliott could lead the last lap, could win the race. The week he could still win the championship by five points. It isn't over yet, fans. Stay with us. The championship is still to be determined between Allen Kowicki and Bill Elliott. Welcome back to Atlanta Motor Speedway in Hampton, Georgia, about 20 miles south of Atlanta, where the NASCAR Winston Cup Series 500 is 281 laps old. It has come down to a battle between Alan Kowicki and Bill Elliott for not only the championship, but for the lead of this race. They are first and second. Let me throw another thing in the mix. Kowicki doesn't have first gear. Now, if they make a pit stop, he has to take off in second gear. That's going to hurt him a little bit. Give Bill Elliott an advantage on the pit stop. That's why Kowicki is so important and leads all these laps up until that last pit stop. And Jerry Punch has a comment on pit road. And Benny, when you think about what might happen right now, it seems that both the teams might consider just doing a gas and go around lap 306 or 307. And if that were to happen, obviously that would be a big advantage for Bill Elliott with first gear. So, I'm telling you, this thing is not over by any stretch of the imagination. But once again, if Kowicki can lead about 30, 40 more laps, he can still win the championship. Here's a good battle. Spencer in the 12 car, Ricky Rudd, and Kyle Petty. And Kyle Petty, fifth, sixth, and seventh. The number two car of uh, Rusty Wallace leaves the parade down the back stretch, and he is fourth. So Jeff Bedard is running third. He's uh, pretty far out front of this group. To the inside. We talked about Rudd getting a relief driver earlier on, but once they fixed the power steering, so we have to think I can drive this thing. Mark Martin went by. He had stood by in case Rudd needed some help. NASCAR would let Jeff Gordon, Rudd's teammate, get in the car because he's a rookie. And rookies can't relief really him. Jeff Gordon dropped out of the race a few laps ago, but they would not let him be a relief driver because of his rookie status. There you can see eight cars on the lead lap in our grand field summary. We're not 
watching the lead because right now Bill Elliott just can't catch Kowicki. Kowicki's pulled out to about a 10 12 car length advantage. This is the best race on the speedway. Positions aren't being uh, changed here very regularly, but these cars are running a lot closer together than they are up front. Now Kyle Petty looks to the inside of Ricky Rudd. Petty takes that car right down the white line. You know, it's strange that Kyle Petty would run his car so low on the racetrack as he does at most racetracks. That rocket in, he runs on that white line. His father was famous for running so high on the racetrack. <laughs> Richard always said the higher you run on the racetrack, the less distance you had to travel to the wall. So his selection of racetrack is not in the genes. <laughs> No, he, he has to make a pit stop, doesn't he? Yeah. So whoever, yeah, whoever does what first will determine what the other one does, I guess. I was thinking that they came in topped off. They talked about coming in topped off during that last caution, but they didn't, so they do have to make a pit stop. And Bill Elliott, at fuel mileage, he gets some surprise he did not come in the last time and put some fuel in the car, but he chose not to. Now that both these cars will have to make a pit stop talking about Benny being involved in championship battle. Let us not forget that uh, Ned was involved in two of them. There have only been 11 drivers who have won the NASCAR Winston Cup more than once. And Ned is one of them. That's pretty good company. And Davey Allison goes back out onto the racetrack. Doesn't look much like a NASCAR stock car. That looks like a modified. But he's back out there trying to maintain a good finish. Jerry Punch is with Paul Andrews. Let's see what we can find out from this end up here. Now, Paul, we're talking about pitting on lap, what, 306, 37, somewhere along there? Yeah, something like that. You know, I mean, it would be crazy to put tires on. Probably just going to gas and go. And it's, you know, anything can happen. This is not over yet. You know, we uh, over that checkered flag drops. So right now, it looks real good, though. We, we're real happy. We'll see what happens. The Hooters Forge are dope, you know, run real good. Alan's done a heck of a job running it, running, running all day. Now wait a minute, you got you've got no first gear. No first gear. It may be a gas and stop. Right, you know, transmission's broken, the first gear went out on a first pit stop, and he's been nursing it. You know, we've been helping him out a little bit, get going. 
you know, it just, that's all it is. You know, we just got to see what happens here. Now Davey's back out, so, you know, if we fall out or something like that, anything can happen. That's Paul Andrews, and he watches Davey Allison's car come back on the pit road. They're holding their breath, guys. Only about maybe eight or nine laps away from that pit stop. You know, Eddie made a good point there, guys. We've virtually given this thing to either Elliott or Al Quickie. If something should happen to both of them and they drop out, Davey yeah, Allison yeah. could still win this still championship. Still win the championship, that's yeah, right. right. We were a little premature in saying it's all over for Davey. But certainly his chances are not the at this point. But Davey is back out on the racetrack after being involved in an incident here on the main straightaway with Ernie Irwin. Kowicki continues to lead the Hooters 500 and he has now led the most laps today but has not yet clinched the five bonus points. Bill Elliott is running in second position as we are near the 300 lap mark. 299 have been completed. There is Elliott in second position. Running in third spot is Jack Bodine. Is Rusty Wallace and fifth is Jimmy Spencer, and the average speed of the race is near 130 miles an hour. Pit stops will be occurring before too long. They must pit for gas to have enough to go the distance. And you remember Connie Sailor from the Bluff City, Tennessee? Yeah. He's got some medical problems, and he's resting up, up there in Bluff City. And we just want to say hello to Connie and hope you get well soon, buddy. Good race driver. Yep. Prayers are with you. Now, Michael Waldrop sees Allen approaching quickly in the rearview mirror. And Michael heads for the inside of the racetrack to allow a clear path for Kawiki. Darrell Waldrop also being lapped in the number 17 Western Auto Machine. He currently is in the 24th. About 19 laps behind. Again, he's coasting down the back straightaway. Yep. Going in turn three. I don't see any smoke out of the car. Oh, uh, some of the spotters said he's blowing an engine in that five car. Well, I don't know. It's it's time that he could have run out of gas. You know, he although he had that first pit stop when, as, when several drivers went a lap down because of making green flag pit stops, he was not one of them. But we will see. Time machine coast to victory lane. We'll see if he goes into Broad area right here is where he would do it. And he is indeed yes. going to the Broad area, so apparently he does have an engine problem. Jerry, any information on what might have happened? Unfortunately, Ricky Rudd just ready to prove that he thinks he may have broken a camshaft, so he will head that car to the garage. Tough break after having such a good run here all afternoon. Yeah, and Rudd will undoubtedly finish seventh in the point standings. Started, he didn't stand much of a chance of moving in any direction. Right. He could not move up to six. And it was a remote possibility that he would have dropped down to eight. But Darrell Walter was a man in eighth, and he's had his problems today, too, with that wreck. Yeah, Ricky was 168 behind Mark Martin, but 82 ahead of Darrell Walter. Davey Allison still out there, completing as many laps as possible. Richard Petty getting ready to go back on the track. I, to protect I, I the knew over. that the STP Pontiac would be back out on the racetrack if at all possible. And it looks uh, like, although we're only about 24 laps from the end of this event, that Petty, with helmet on, is ready to go back out there and be around at the checkered flag. Changing left sides on the 15 car. I guess they feel like they need enough gas to make it the rest of the way. They can change left sides while they're putting the gas in to at least get that many times for the car. Strategy, man. They change those left side tires in about 10 seconds, and they need to put that much gas in it. So, yeah, because they don't have to go around the car to change the right sides. That takes three or four seconds extra. As we near the end of the race, we would like to, uh, as per usual, thank all the NASCAR officials that have been so cooperative and helpful to us in our.
presentation of their events. Bill Friends, last record. Dick Beatty, who's retiring at the end of this race. We wish him well in his retirement. Chip Williams, all the NASCAR people who are very helpful to us. I would just like to say to Dick Beatty, buddy, you have been one of the best things you've ever done. Closing in. Jerry, is that right? That's exactly right. Now, by calculations, Kawiki would be really close at lap 307. But right now, guys, hey, it's lap 307. So we are told that possibly Kawiki will try to make it to 308, 309, maybe even to 310 if he can make it. The car number 12 on pit road, Jimmy Spencer. And we're awaiting the arrival of Alan Kawiki and Bill Elliott. Jerry, it's hard to understand why they would even gamble when they got to stop anyway. Why would they gamble on going two or three more laps? I guess they're just terrified that a caution flag might come out and put them a lap down to four or five good race cars. But if they only take on fuel, they won't lose a lap. That's Those cars running up front. I don't know. We'll have to see just how long it takes them to go down pit road with the 55 mile an hour speed limit. Jimmy Spencer relinquished fourth position, came in, got right side tires and gas, and is back out there. Rusty Wallace now on pit road, giving up third position. Once more goes by, does not come in the pits. It'll just be gas for Rusty. Well, Kyle Petty, my, Kyle Petty just blew, blew an engine. I believe the car was smoking going into turn one. He's right by the leaders. And Rusty must have been out of fuel. They finally get the car pushed off, and away he goes. Rusty also, we understand, does not have first gear like Allen. We'll see his eye go yeah, this yeah, time. I believe he's gonna, so <laughs> Elliot is way up on the racetrack. Well, Alan stays out there. Yeah, he does. But he can't run out of gas down the front straight away. He loses everything he runs out now. Yeah, that seems like it's just rolling the dice a little too much. Jerry, what are they thinking now? They told Alan the pit that time by. Their calculations are it may not make it back. They said, you've got to come in as he went very high in turn four. He must have just heard him. He was already past pit over to now. Thank you. 
16 more laps. Terry Labonte's going to lead these laps. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bill Elliott, if it finishes this way, he can't win the championship.
Winston Cup victory in 1992. Allen becomes the 21st NASCAR Winston Cup champion. It comes in his seventh full year of Winston Cup competition. But our hats off also to Bill Elliott, who did everything he could possibly do to gain the, gain the championship. But he came up short. And Richard Petty is taking one final lap around this racetrack as the fans salute him and his career comes to an end. Here comes Kawicki down the front straightaway. He and Richard will probably collide because I'm sure Kawicki's going to do something spectacular. Let's see. Remember his first win at Phoenix? He took what he called, and there these are his words, a Polish victory lap. Yep. And guess what? He's going to do it again. <laughs> Did I mess up? Did I do wrong? <laughs> Making that lap the wrong way. Right now, he's a champ. He can do about anything he wants to, Kenny Bob. Absolutely right. It's been a long, tough season for Alan Kowicki, but he has done it. Appropriately, he wins the championship in the race sponsored by his race team sponsor, Hooters Restaurants. Yeah, Allen now gets the helmet off. They've already got the cap saying Winston Cup champion for 1992 that Allen will proudly put on his head, emerge from the car, and receive the applause from the thousands and thousands of race fans who have gathered here on this Sunday afternoon to see who among six drivers would win this championship. <laughs> He's combing his hair. He's combing his hair. He had a comb <laughs> down there. I wonder what he was looking for. Come on, Alan. Put on the hat. <laughs> well, what else we could lost down there? <laughs> well, I think we're about ready. Here he comes. And let's listen. time an owner driver won the NASCAR Winston Cup championship was Richard Petty in 79 and how appropriate on the day he retires Alan Kowicki becomes the first since then to win the title as driver and owner. Here's Jerry. And Bob there were those that questioned his sanity two years ago when he turned down the likes of Junior Johnson and Bud Moore and Rick Hendrick to do it yourself and Alan today it had to be all worthwhile. Congratulations. I'll tell you man this is like living a dream here the car ran great. 
Our engine was fantastic all day and car handled real well in the Goodyear tires. This is the fastest we've ever run at this track and the longest the tires have ever lasted. The Goodyear radials work great. I gotta thank my sponsors, Hooters Restaurant, Naturally Fresh Salad Dressings, Classic Mixers, and Ford Motor Company. This Ford Thunderbird's been a great car for us all year long. We ran great. I led the most laps. I knew how far I had to go in a race to lead the most laps. And at that point, you know, there was no way that he could beat me. I was a little bit safe coming down pit road. And we lost first gear in the transmission on our first pit stop. So I had trouble getting out of the pits all day long. You know, I think that's probably where he made up a little bit of time on me was, you know, getting in and out of the pits because we were having transmission trouble. But at that point, I knew where we were. You know, I wanted to win the race because we were, you know, we had led quite a while, but there'll be other races, but this championship's what I wanted. And I just, you know, thank God for the fortune to, to be here and to be an American and compete on the Winston Cup circuit. Man, when I moved down south years ago, this was my dream. I came in a pickup truck and a trailer, and I want to thank all the people that along the way in ASA and everywhere in my career have helped me. And, uh, you know, I said that we, you know, we made this nickname, this car, the Underbird today. We're going into this race, the underdog, and we ran good. I'm really proud of the whole team. Uh, Paul Andrews, Danny Glad, Ron Vaccaro, Randy Clary, the guys in the engine shop did great. Um, there's more Gary Preziosi and Shane Parsnow, Tony Gibson, Pete Jackson, Jeff Bice, Tom Mount, on and, you know, if I forgot anybody, I'm sorry, but it was a team effort. We got a great team and I'm really proud of them. I couldn't have done it without them. It's, you know, I said, this is a long answer to one question. <laughs> Cut me off whenever you're here. <laughs> That's fine, Alan. I know you're going to catch your breath. Let us just congratulate you again on becoming the 1992 Winston Cup champion. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, this is, uh, just a storybook ending having Hooter sponsor the race and my dad's here and uh, just just really wonderful. Alan Kowicki how appropriate here in his seventh year of driving in Winston Cup that he would drive car number seven to the Winston Cup championship the last one to win as a car owner and a driver who else but King Richard Petty oh. and for the thousands the people of people here today there. and the millions watching around the world, we direct your attention up to turn four. Ladies and gentlemen, where for the final time, the legend, the man, the king, Richard Petty, will say goodbye to all the millions of fans who have adored him for many, many years. So on your feet, wave and say goodbye, your special way to King Richard Petty. So it's been it's been wonderful. I mean, 35 years the good Lord's looked after us all these years, and, and you know, I'm still walking around. Uh, you know, I hate it got in a wreck and disappointed me and some of the fans. But uh, the big deal is we're here talking to you when it's over with, and uh, I, I wouldn't change none of it. I wouldn't trade nothing for nothing else. Neither would we. Thank you so much, Richard, for all the memories. Richard Petty walks out for the final time of the STP Pontiac, and coming up next, we'll have a very, very special tribute to the King. Have the hankies handy, folks, because it is something you don't want to miss. Let's check into victory lane with our race winner where John Kernan is. John? Well, Bill, Bill Elliott, you did just about everything you could. You won the race, but as you said when you climbed out of the car, hey, I won, but I lost. Well, it's been a long year, and, you know, Regardless of what happens, it's been one of those type seasons and a lot of things that's happened. And I mean, I'm just glad it's over with. This Budweiser Ramaco team has done a fantastic job all year long. And to go out, went in the race, the last race Richard Petty will ever run in, I guess that says something. You know, we've done about everything else. We didn't win a championship. And I think we're going to go up to Bill Elliott Ford tomorrow. We're going to have a hell of a car sale. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll see you there. Bill Elliott in victory lane, guys. Congratulations to Bill Elliott, who did indeed give it everything he had, but came right, up hey, just a few go. points short in his attempt to win his second Winston Cup championship. The quest for the Cup standings, 10 separate first and second. It is the closest margin in NASCAR Winston Cup history. Bill Elliott with 4,068, 10 behind. Davey Allison finishes third, Harry Gant fourth, and Kyle Petty finishes fifth 
in the point standings. As far as the race results are concerned, Bill Elliott was the winner, followed by Kowicki, Jeff Bodine, Jimmy Spencer, and Terry Labonte. Well, Benny, it's over, and it was great, wasn't it? It was fantastic, but I'm just so glad that I was here today to be a part of this because we saw two guys doing everything they could possibly do. I'm talking about Elliot Kowicki and Davey Allison when he was in there trying to win a championship. And of course, we saw the final race from Richard Petty, which in itself was uh, enough to bring all the people here that came here, but we threw the championship in as a bonus. Fantastic. Ernie Irvin, we see way back there. Jeff Gordon, his first race, his first Winston Cup race, he finishes 31st. And Richard Petty will be shown as 35th finisher in his final NASCAR Winston Cup event. Season is over, and uh, it's been a great one. There you can see uh, Alan Kowicki as he is now on the back of a convertible being paraded in front of the race fans who have gathered here. Alan Kowicki, winner of the 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. And he's not going backwards. He's going around the racetrack <laughs> the way he's supposed to. But he threatened, and he told everyone if he won the championship, he was going to go make that Polish lap backwards. Well, now thoughts immediately turn to 1993. Each driver will be hoping that 93 will be his year, as 1992 was for Alan Kowicki. There's just 92, there are just 92 days until the Daytona 500, and we can start it all over again. So as NASCAR is crowned a brand new champion here this afternoon in Alan Kowicki, we bid another very special Farewell.